If you want to know how to create financial security and learn how to live a stress-free life of financial freedom, you will find what you need to know right now. Hi, my name is Tom Monson, and I'm an award-winning author and financial consultant, and I'm going to share with you the five secrets of how to turn your life into the life you want. Are you watching this because something inside you wants a better life? Do you feel like you want control your own destiny? Well, that's great because I'm going to show you some simple techniques to get you on the right track to financial security and freedom. Now, you may be wondering who I am and what can I teach you about getting rich, right? Well, first off, I've been helping people plan their financial futures for more than 40 years. I've helped more than a few of these people make millions on their own. Second, I've done very well for myself. In my life, I've worked hard and made millions of dollars. Not bragging, just telling you so you'll understand that this is not just theory. So let me tell you why I'm doing this. In 2010, during the worst of the real estate meltdown, I was looking at a house that the bank had taken back. As I walked through the home, I noticed the lines on the door jam where the mom or dad had recorded the children's height at different ages. In the two smaller bedrooms, kids' posters were all over the walls. And I was moved by the thought of the family that must have lived there. In my imagination, I could hear the children laughing as they were running through the house. And I could hear the Christmas carols and all the holiday celebrations. And I was saddened to see that they had lost their home. And I thought they must have worked so hard to buy it. When I finished the inspection, I was leaving through the front door and I was greeted by these two friendly cats on the porch. One of them rubbed against me as she meowed. Uh, the poor things looked like they were starving. I sat in my car for a couple minutes and reflected on the house and the family and the, and the cats. I decided to go to the grocery store and buy a bag of cat food and take it back to the cats. I felt it was the least that I could do. I picked up the cat food and was waiting in line to pay, and ahead of me this young boy, maybe 10, and his mom were buying a shopping cart full of groceries. I noticed the boy was carefully watching the checker as she scanned each item. He was concerned about something. When the checker announced the price, the boy looked worried. He and his mom exchanged looks. It was the dreaded look. Having grown up in a poor family, I knew what that look meant. And I'm sure you know, too, what I'm talking about. This could be trouble. That was the moment the idea for this book was born. I knew what the former owners of the house, the mother, the son, didn't have. And I knew what they all needed. I also knew from past experience why so many people in our world need to know how to find financial security. And what's funny is it won't take any special skills or knowledge for you to find financial security. It just takes a few basic ideas, a little bit of discipline, and a big desire to make your life better. Anyone can do it. How about you? Do you have the desire to be financially free? If you're ready, then let's go. For many of us, the problem is no one actually ever taught us how to handle our money so that we can be financially happy as we go through our lives. Many of us feel uncomfortable, unhappy, or even angry about our finances. Albert Einstein, one of the smartest men that ever lived, defines insanity as doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. If you're completely satisfied with your financial life, then keep doing what you're doing. If you do, the chances are you'll continue to get the same result you are getting now. However, if you're not satisfied with your financial life, then maybe it's time for a change. What do you think? First, I'm going to show you what poor people do, and then I'm going to show you what rich people do. The rest is up to you. You can either keep doing what you're doing, getting what you're getting, or you can start your new journey to financial security. You know, and as you begin your new journey to financial security, it's very possible that you will get thoughts or ideas that this isn't going to work out for you. And you may have already had these thoughts. And here's why you're feeling this resistance current beliefs about money may cause you to resist the changes that you need to make to start your new way of life. The best way to deal with these thoughts is to tell yourself to be open to a better way of life and keep moving forward. And as you move through this book and create your plan, you'll gain confidence and these feelings will subside. I promise. And here's the funny part. Making a change may be a lot easier than you think. 
<laughs> Let me give you an example. Let's do a little exercise. Fold your arms like you normally do. Okay, now fold them the opposite way. Feels a little uncomfortable, doesn't it? Well, I'm going to ask you to do the same thing with your finances. At first, it may seem a little different, a little awkward, but pretty soon it will feel natural and you'll not even think about it. And that's when you'll know that you're on your way to being financially secure or even on your way to being rich. Here's a simple concept I want you to consider. This comes from Les Brown, who's a motivational speaker. He says, do what is easy and your life will become hard. Do what is hard and your life will become easy. What does it take to be financially secure? Well, most people equate financial security with being wealthy or rich. It's not really about how much money you have. It's more about how happy you are with what you have right now. And I'm not talking about settling for less than you want. What I'm talking about is accepting where you are in your life's journey in relation to your chosen destination. Some people live rich, satisfying lives without having wealth. And some wealthy people live poor, unsatisfying lives. Which one would you rather have? Research shows that the happiest people are those that have good relationship with money. They have a plan for their future. They have enough money in case of emergencies. They are setting aside enough money to give themselves a quality lifestyle when they retire. They know that if something happens to them, their loved ones will be taken care of. They are making contributions to help the less fortunate. Secret number one, how we think. Have you ever wondered why some people are rich and others are not? Unlike rich people, poor people don't understand how unhealthy attitudes about money causes them to make poor financial decisions. Psychologists specializing in financial therapy continue to publish research about the connection between well-being and personal financial knowledge, attitudes, and behavior. The following are some of the most common beliefs poor people have about money. Poor people tell you money doesn't grow on trees, and there's never enough money. They'll tell you there's never enough to go around, or they'll tell you they are poor. Poor people tell you money is the root of all evil, and if you pursue it, you too will become evil. They believe all rich people are evil and will do bad things for money. Poor people tell you that money affects the relationships in negative ways. They fight over money, or they'll fight over the fact that there's not enough money. Poor people believe that some people will sacrifice their principles to get money. They will say and do things they believe they never would. Thieves, robbers, drug dealers, and many other types of criminals are motivated by money. Financial experts agree that people need to know how to manage the money they earn, and most of us are not doing a very good job of saving for emergencies, retirement, and final expenses. In a recent study published by the Journal of Financial Therapy, identified four basic attitudes that can negatively affect personal financial choices. Beliefs and thoughts translate into behavior and can be identified by four harmful personality types. First one is money worship. It's the belief that more money, income, or financial windfall will solve all the money worshippers' problems. This is the most common attitude towards money. Money worshippers tend to carry more revolving debt. The next one is money status, and it links the self-worth of the person to net worth. People who believe money is a status symbol are more likely to be young, single, less educated, and have less wealth. They tend to believe that money will make them more important and more impressive. Money vigilance is often associated with the miserly person, someone who is a secretive about finances and extremely wary of spending his money. These individuals are often financially secure but frequently do not enjoy their money. Money avoidance is likely to bring a feeling of fear, anxiety, or disgust towards money and finances. This is found especially in younger, single, and low-income people. They believe money is bad. They do not deserve to have it, and they are better off without it. And according to a large body of research, women report higher levels of stress than men and feel it more often. 71% of us worry about finances, inadequate savings, job issues, debt, and credit. 
In the book I go into much more detail about stress and finances. But needless to say, you're not alone. The number of people who unnecessarily struggle with their finances is staggering. So if you want to do something about it, keep watching. Make a commitment to change and take action in your life. Now let's talk about what poor people do. The first thing to help you get into better financial state is to identify what has prevented you from reaching your financial dream life. What do you think would happen if you stopped doing the same thing that poor people do every day? If you're doing these things, if you want to continue to be poor, then keep it up. Here's a list of what poor people do. Poor people buy brand new cars. Buying a brand new car is a terrible investment. The minute you drive off the lot, as a new owner, you lose five to ten thousand dollars or even more. Poor people loan money to their friends. If you loan money to a friend or relative, make sure you don't care about either one very much because all too often, if the loan goes bad, you're going to lose both. Poor people buy real estate too soon. If you buy a home before you can afford it, you may not be able to keep it. Poor people spend too much money. They buy way too many toys such as boats, jet skis, motorcycles, snowmobiles, big screen TVs, stereo system, fashion items, and other things that lose their value very quickly. Poor people eat out or party too often. They spend too much money on things like coffee drinks, beer, wine, and other items. Financial experts agree that the biggest reason poor people stay poor is because they don't have a plan. This is also the reason poor people end up in their old age with nothing is because they fail to create a plan for themselves. If our life is a journey, where do you want to go? Doesn't it make sense to have a plan to help you get there? The value of planning is to help you know where your money goes and how to get where you want to go. Even smart people make mistakes. I knew this teacher named Emily. Her life's dream was to have her own house. She saved diligently until she had accumulated a little more than $50,000. One day, she and her boyfriend went house shopping. They found what she thought was the perfect home. She had enough money for the down payment. The only problem was she didn't earn enough money to afford the monthly payments. So in order to buy the house, her boyfriend had to sign on the loan with her. She said it was her dream come true. She spent hours painting and fixing the house. She did a beautiful job of decorating it. Soon, it was the home she had always dreamed of. A few months after she finished the work, her boyfriend decided to leave the relationship. Since Emily didn't earn enough money to make the payments on her own, she drained her savings. When her savings ran out, she was no longer able to make the payments. She fell behind. She tried to sell the house, but couldn't find a buyer. The bank finally foreclosed on the loan and took her home. She lost her down payment, the improvements she made on the house, and her dream. She was so embarrassed about her loss that she no longer spent much time with her friends and became very depressed. Because the foreclosure damaged her credit, for the next 10 years she had a hard time finding a nice place to live. It was very sad for Emily. Her mistake was relying on her boyfriend to help with the payments when he wasn't willing to fully commit to the relationship. This often happens when people buy their homes before they can really afford it. Now that you've seen some of the things that poor people do, let's take a look at how rich people handle things. If you want to be rich, then start doing what rich people do. If we want a better life, doesn't it make sense to know how to make it happen? The following describes many of the ways rich people think and how they got rich. If you want to be rich, these are some of the things that you will have to do. Rich people are friends with money. First and foremost, rich people know how they should feel and think about money. Rich people know that money can be a force for good. They know that money can help people in so many ways. They know money can buy food for the hungry. Money can buy medicine for the sick. And money can send a message of love and hope to people who need it. Rich people view the world differently. Instead of seeing circumstances that affect their lives as a problem, they simply see it as something that needs to be dealt with, and they go out and find a solution. And once they find a solution, they set out to fix the problem. Rich people know how to shop. Rich people never go shopping when they're hungry, angry, lonely, sad, and they almost never shop without a list. Instead of waiting until the last minute, rich people take action. 
They don't wait until Christmas Eve to buy gifts. They're more likely to shop the specials that begin months before. Rich people know that nobody cares about their money as much as they do. They understand that the salesman who may earn his living making recommendations and giving advice may not always have the rich person's best interest in mind. They are more likely to get a second opinion. Rich people know that every time they borrow money, they're borrowing the money from their future selves. Rich people do not lend money to their friends and family. They are more likely to give money to a family member or a friend without the expectation of getting it back. Rich people know hope is not a strategy. Rich people know that just hoping will not make things better. They know buying lottery tickets every week is not a good retirement strategy, and neither is hoping that things will get better. They realize they have to take action to change things. They have a plan, so they know what to do. And if they don't know what to do, they find out, then they make a plan and execute the plan. Rich people know it's not always about having it all. It's about having what's important. How do rich people think about their houses? Most rich people think that their home is a place where all are welcome, a safe place for their children filled with love, and a refuge for all who need some time away from the world. Rich people think of their homes as a preferred way to accumulate wealth. During one of the many housing price corrections, my nephew Mike called me in a total panic. He told me that the value of his home had dropped by over $100,000 and he was really upset. I asked him if he still liked living in the house. He said, yeah. And I asked him if the neighborhood was still nice as I remembered it and he said, yes. And I asked him if he still liked the school where his kids went. He told me it was a great school and he still loved it. And I asked him if he was still working at his job or if he thought he was going to be laid off. He told me that he was busy at work and wasn't worried about that. I asked him if he could still afford the house payments or if they had gone up. He told me that the payments were manageable. I told him I was confused. I asked him what he was so concerned about. He just about screamed that the value of his home had gone down. I told him that the real value hadn't gone down for the things that really count. And I told him that the value of real estate is, is like a boat that rises and falls with the tide and not to worry about it. I told him he had other things to worry about, like being a good dad and provider. Fast forward 10 years, and Mike sold that house for about six times what he paid for it. It turned out to be a great investment for him, as well as a wonderful place to live for his family for many years. Rich people know that their lives have seasons. They also know that they can't change them. They know the only thing they can change is the way they look at the seasons of their lives. Winter. Have you ever had a crisis in your life? Maybe it was a health crisis, relationship crisis, financial crisis, a layoff, or any other unpleasant time. Well, rich people know that the only thing they can do about the winners is to prepare themselves with emergency funds, insurance, and the certain knowledge that this too shall pass. Spring is a time of the year when the farmers plant the seeds that provide them with their crops. This is the time of opportunity. Rich people prepare themselves for spring. What can you do to prepare for spring? You can study, read, and learn what you need to know to plant the crops that will flourish. Summer, this is when you nourish, feed, and protect the crops that you planted because you know that the predators will almost always try to take them away from you. Predators come as bugs or people who want to steal without regard for you or what you've worked so hard to get. And fall, fall is for many of us is the favorite time of the year. This is when the weather is cooling down from the hot summer. Rich people know that this is when you reap the benefits of your hard work. So if you do well, reap without apology. If you don't do well, reap without complaint. Rich people take responsibility for what happens to them. Rich people know about finances. They understand that income is the money that you earn and expenses is the money you spend. They also know that when income exceeds expenses, they're doing well and they have a chance for success. They know that a good income is the result of hard work. Rich people also understand the difference between assets and liabilities. Assets is something that you own that has value and can provide you with a retirement income where liabilities is the money that you owe and has to be paid back. 
Rich people know that some debt is necessary, but most debt is not good for them. Rich people generally pay with cash. They typically save for things that they want. They know that using credit cards to purchase what they want will cost them more because of the interest and carrying charges. Rich people look for progress. Rich people realize that things will often come up to throw them off track. They realize this is a normal part of life and they are only going to be off track for a short while. Rich people look for more progress than for perfection. They also realize that when they're presented with a challenge, they must stick to their plan. Sometimes they'll try several paths to get to a goal, but like a baby learning how to walk, rich people know that they have to keep on working toward their goal to achieve it. If you want to be rich, then start thinking like a rich person. This is the most important thing you can do to help you become successful in life. Well, secret number two is your plan. Rich people understand that wishes are dreams without intention or deadlines. They know wishes don't often come true. That's why rich people have goals, plans, dates, and progress. Rich people understand that the only way that they will be able to achieve true success is to first want something, take aim at it, create a goal to get it, make a plan, and then take actions to realize it. The main thing that sets rich people apart from everyone else is they have goals. Rich people have goals for almost everything in their lives. They have goals for their continuing education and the education of their children. Their financial goals include how much money they are going to have at different stages of their life. Their retirement plan describes what they will be doing when they retire. These plans could include traveling the world, volunteering, helping others, and much more. Their accomplishments are planned to include what they want to achieve over the course of their lives. Here's how their goal works. First, they get an idea. They think about it for a while. They decide they want it. They create a desire, and possibly a burning desire. They decide when they want to achieve it. They make a plan. They execute the plan, and they keep working at it until they have what they want. If you want to be rich, you'll have to come up with a desire and a plan to be rich. Your goals will become a critical part of your plan. The first thing you have to do is get a handle on your financial life. You need to set up a budget for the money you spend. Start tracking your expenses. Just by doing that, you'll be amazed at how things will improve in your life. The next part of your financial plan is to figure out how much money you're worth. You do this with your personal balance sheet. This is where you list your assets and liabilities. Once you see how much you are worth and how to measure it, you will have a better idea of what you need to do to grow your wealth. The next step is to plan how much money you want to be worth. You will be surprised at how much money you will accumulate if you just keep track of how much you have. Use your balance sheet to calculate your net worth at least once a year. Part of your financial plan is to make goals that will help you get what you really want out of life. Make a list of every good thing you want to happen in your life. Things like buying a home, education for you and your children, automobiles, savings, trips, anything that you really want. Then turn your list into goals. The simplest way is to go down your list of what you want and figure out when you want them. Use your list to prioritize what you really want out of your life. Once you decide what you want, are passionate about it, and are willing to work for it, SMARTER goals will help you get there. SMARTER is an acronym that you can use to guide your goal setting. It can help you clarify your ideas, focus your efforts, and increase the chance of getting what you want. For more information about this, go to the website, fivemoneysecrets.com, or check out the book. Secret number three, set your priorities. Rich people have priorities. They also know that if they can change their thinking, they can change their lives. Rich people are not rich because they earn a lot of money. They're rich because they save a lot of money and earn money with their money. Pay yourself first. This little change in your thinking and the way you deal with your finances will have a great impact on you and your family for generations to come. There are people in almost every walk of life 
who are just making it. I know people who make 50000 a year who tell me that they're just getting by. I also know people who make 150000 a year that are also telling me they're just getting by. The main reason is they don't control their money. Their money controls them. I also know people that earn 25000 a year that are doing well because they have learned how to control their money. I've known people who got rich with just pennies and people who made millions who have nothing. Pay yourself first means that when you get a paycheck, put a small percentage into your never touch account and leave it there. Start with 10% at first. If that's not possible, start with a smaller amount. The important thing is to start. Start with 1% if you have to, but get in the habit of paying yourself first. Make a commitment to increase your amount until you are paying yourself first as much as you can. Create a never touch account. Start paying yourself first and put your money into this account. Guard it because it'll give you peace of mind and help the old person you're going to become. Rich people know they will be tempted to use it to help their kids, buy something they want, go somewhere they want, go somewhere they've always wanted to go, or spend it on one of the many things that come up. They know these temptations will always be there. Just remember, nobody is as interested in your financial well-being as you are. It's not being selfish, it's the ant saving up for the winter because he knows he doesn't want to be left out in the cold. I sat down with this young woman many years ago to help her with her finances. Her name was Melody. She told me that six months before, she was between jobs, broke, and her house had been robbed and everything she owned was stolen. She told me when she got home that day, she just about went out of her mind with anger. She said she swore she would never allow herself to be in that position again, and she wanted my help. I taught her a simple principle that I'll share with you now. I asked her, how much money does it take to live? She said, about $800 a month. I said, do you know someone who makes $2,000 a month? She thought for a moment and said she did. Then I asked her, what do you think they would say it cost for them to live? She thought for another moment and told me probably about $2,000. Then I asked her if she knew someone who made $3,000 a month. And she thought for a moment and nodded. And before I could ask her the next question, she said, I get it. It doesn't matter how much you make, you'll spend it, right? And I had some play money in my briefcase and I pulled out a bill and told her, this is the way poor people handle their money. I cut off a third and said, this goes to your rent. I cut off another chunk and said, this goes to taxes. Then as I cut off more pieces, I said, this goes to car payment, this is for your car insurance, this one is for entertainment, this little piece is for charity, and finally, this little piece doesn't amount to much, so we tend to blow it. I told her as I blew the little piece from my fingertips. And this is the way it goes month after month, then year after year. Then the next thing you know, you're old and can't earn as much, and then you're broke. Do you see what I'm talking about, I asked her. She said, so what can I do? I asked her, want to know what rich people do? She said, heck yes. I pulled out another bill and cut off about 10% and put it into her hand. Keep this for yourself. I cut the dollar up into similar pieces and at the end blew the last tiny piece away and said, you still spent your money, but at the end of the month, you still have 10% of what you made. So to finish Mel's story, fast forward to her passing a few years ago. She had accumulated over $500,000 in those 40 years and never again worried about finances. By many standards, Mel became rich. Rich people know one of the most powerful principles in money management is the power of compounding. This is a very powerful force where money is left to earn compound interest year after year. Rich people know the only sure way to attain wealth is to spend less than they earn, pay themselves first, and save their money in a never-touch compounding account. This is the easiest part of the whole plan. Just set a few dollars aside every month for a number of years, like how the journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. You start and finish it by putting one foot in front of the other until you're there. This simple example is based on a savings program that pays 7.5% annually compounded interest. Notice the longer you leave your cash in the plan, the faster your money grows, and you end up with a whole lot more. This is why 
rich people get started as soon as they can. According to research, only half of us could come up with $2,000 to cover an emergency if something came up. Your emergency fund should cover at least six months of your regular monthly expenses, and if you have any special considerations, such as a health condition or special needs child, you may want to put even more aside. Everyone is different, and so are our needs. Have enough money in your emergency fund to make sure you feel financially secure in the event of a job loss or other major expenses. Rich people have several accounts for their money, and their favorite one is their dream account. This is because their dream account is where they keep all their fun. Rich people call it their dream account, but they really know it's part of their plan to give themselves and their families a better life. So start putting your money into your dream account right away. Then start dreaming about and planning the fun and good times you're gonna have. When you imagine something, whether it's a new home, a tropical vacation, college education for yourself or your children, you can make it happen. The first step is to believe it's possible, then start saving for it in your dream account. Rich people check their credit scores at least once a year. If your credit score isn't where it should be, then you should work on it to get it to at least 700, which is considered a good score. If a rich person sees something that doesn't belong on their credit report, they immediately contact the credit bureau and deal with it. Rich people know that a person's credit score is a reflection of who they are. What is the biggest threat to your financial security? Rich people are conscious of their health and how to take care of themselves. They seek out advice from books, professionals, and classes that will help them have a healthy lifestyle. Rich people take care of themselves. What are some simple ways to improve your health? Well, don't smoke. Not only is it bad for you physically, but calculate how much money it will cost you to buy cigarettes and pay for the damage it does to your body. Lose weight and reduce your health risks. It may cost you a little more to eat right, but your good health is well worth it. Get rid of your stress. Dealing with the cause of your stress will do wonders for your health. Rich people know what a good life looks like. What does good life mean to you? What does a nice home mean to you? Take some time to describe it. Look through magazines and real estate brochures to find the home of your dreams. Then make a goal, set a plan, and start working on it. Is an education important to you and your children? Your education could be to know how to make money with your money. You can have it all, nice cars, clothes, and things you want. You can take wonderful and exotic vacations, travel the world. It's all they're waiting for you. Just figure out what you want, make a list, set your goals, make your plan, and then get busy. Secret number four, protect what's important. Rich people protect the important things in their lives. Most rich people work hard to provide their family with a home, comfortable lifestyle, and the means to achieve their hopes and dreams. Rich people know that meeting these responsibilities requires careful planning. Rich people know that they have to do several important things to protect their family. Rich people take the time to deal with the difficult subject of their mortality and the certainty of their death. They make their final wishes known through a last will and testament. Rich people know that when they pass on, it will be the difficult time for their family. Their loved ones will have to deal with sorrow and grief from their loss, and someone will have to take care of the business of winding down their final affairs. A will takes this burden off the survivors and tells them what you want to happen with your possessions, who you want to get what, and any other final instructions you may have. It's a good idea to see an attorney to help you with a will. Mary was one of my earliest clients. She described how during the holidays, she and her three sisters would gather around the piano and sing as their mother, Helen, played the Christmas carols. Mary was the youngest of four, and her dream was to become a concert pianist like her mother. Unexpectedly, Helen died. All four of the sisters wanted the piano. Helen had promised the piano to Mary, but her oldest sister, Sally, went to her father George in tears and told him, Daddy, Mommy promised the piano to me. 
grief-stricken, George wanted to honor what he thought were the last wishes of his dead wife. So he gave the piano to Sally. When I last spoke with Mary, she and Sally hadn't talked in over 20 years. To this day, I don't know if they ever did. What's worse, Mary never played the piano again. Rich people also understand about other types of protection they need. Things like an advanced directive, a health care proxy, and a living trust. These are all things that you can learn more about in the book. For many of us, the reason we work so hard is to provide our children with a better life. Rich people know the best thing they can do for their children is to prepare them for life. So what do you think is the best way to help your children find happiness and financial security? Well, we all know if you give someone a fish, you feed him for a day. But if you teach him how to fish, you'll feed him for a lifetime. People often ask me, is it better to give my children money or to teach them how to manage their money? You know, the things that made us strong and smart were the struggles we had to go through. We don't want our kids to have to struggle, but what if it makes them better people? Rich people plan for the day when they retire. They know when they reach retirement age, they will be totally dependent on their retirement program and what they have saved. When you're ready to retire, your retirement income will be the most important thing in your life. This is when you want to enjoy your life. Isn't that why you work so hard? Will you have enough money? What do you want to do when you retire? Sit around, watch TV? <laughs> well, that's great if that's what you truly want to do. I know people who are involved in daytime television and absolutely love it. On the other hand, I see a lot of unhappy people sitting around watching TV because that's all they can afford to do. So what do you want to do? Do you want to travel, visit the beautiful places in your country? How about some of the exotic places in our world? Almost everyone I talk to wants to retire and travel, enjoy a vacation lifestyle. I recently read that nearly 80% of our population would like to retire and travel. Unfortunately, the vast majority of them won't be able to afford to travel. They are destined to stay home. So do you like to work in your garden? Many people have wonderful experiences in their garden in their later years. If this is what you want to do, then you could be very happy. Will you have to continue to work? Since 67% of retired people have to live on the meager Social Security benefit, the chances of having to work well into your retirement is very real. If you love your work, this may not be so bad. Rich people know life insurance is the foundation of their financial plan and a gift to their loved ones in the event they do not live to see their goals and dreams come true. Rich people know life insurance is how they prepare for life's uncertainties. It gives them peace of mind knowing they have protected the future of their loved ones and the people who depend on them. Secret number five, giving back. They call it a life worth living, and rich people understand the value of giving. Now I can only speak for myself, but some of the greatest pleasures I've had in my life have been the good I've been able to do with the money I've earned. Because of the money I was able to give, there are thousands of orphans who were fed when they were hungry, given a warm place to rest their heads when they had nowhere else to go, felt safe in a big scary world, and given warm clothes and blankets when they were cold. I've been able to donate money to my church to help spread the good news to countries and lands where they need to understand unconditional love. No matter what happens to me, no one will ever be able to take away all the good that I've done with my money. No matter what else happens in my life, no one will ever be able to change the good I have done for other people. And the truth is, when I'm giving, I'm the one who truly gets the gifts and the blessings of giving. So take a moment and reflect on what you'd like to do to help others with your money. Then make plans and start giving right away. So here we are. Is there something inside of you that cries out for a better life? If so, it's up to you to change your life. 
If you don't like the way things are going and want them to change, take control and change it. Remember, you have the choice to do the easy thing and make your life hard. Or you can choose to do the hard thing and make your life easy. No one else cares about you as much as you do. Be the boss of your own life and start living the rich life you deserve and do it today. Have you taken the first step on your journey in making yourself rich? The moment you decide to really change is when wonderful things will start happening to you. Change your thinking and change your life. Have you made the commitment to yourself and to your family that you will take control of your life and no longer be controlled by your money? Well, when you do, we've put together all the forms and tools you need to create your own personal financial plan. You'll be able to use I'd Rather Be Rich, a quick form to help you identify the things that may be holding you back. You can use My Budget to learn how to control your money. You can use My Balance Sheet track your net worth. You can use My Life Insurance Planner to determine how much money your family would need if you were suddenly taken from them. You can use My Goal Portfolio to create your own plan. You can use How to Save a Fortune to find money that will mean thousands of dollars to you when you need it the most. Read the books listed in your success library and start adding your own picks to build on your knowledge. Use My Financial Plan to write your plan and take the first step. Use the things I need to do and get busy. Use the things I'm grateful for and watch them multiply. Now all of this is going to take some work, but you have to take the first step on your journey to be financially free. So if you really want to know how to create financial security and learn how to live a stress-free life of financial freedom, you'll find what you need to know in this book. So order your copy today. It'll change your family's lives for generations. Good luck.